In graphs and tracks, you have a track that you can adjust the height of. You have a ball that rolls along the track. Below the track and the ball, you have position indicators, velocity indicators. Above it and to the right, you have graph windows for position, velocity graphs, and acceleration graphs. To move the track, you simply grab on it and drag it up or down to produce any kind of track that you want. You can also just click right above it, one at a time, if that's what you choose to do. The ball can be moved by simply grabbing it and dragging it to where you would like to start it, or you can click on the position act, um, indicator and put it wherever you would like to. The initial velocity of the ball can be determined by clicking on the velocity. So right is positive, left is negative, and so if you were to set the ball at a position of 100 meters and give it, let's say, a positive velocity of 10 meters per second and click on Roll Ball, you'll see that in the position graph it starts to produce a linear graph just like you would expect for an object that's moving with a constant velocity. If I click on the velocity graph and click uh, Roll Ball, then you get a horizontal graph, again, like you would expect with a constant velocity. Suppose we wanted the ball to roll down a ramp similar to what you did in your lab. So perhaps I set this ramp up so that it has a nice steady incline. And I just click each of these towers until I get a nice straight ramp and drag them to where I'd like. And I will set the ball to initially start at zero meters and I will start it with a zero velocity. If I want to see what that position graph looks like, I click Roll Ball, and it produces a graph, a curved line, very much like we got <clears throat> from our lab. The velocity graph would look like this, a straight line with a positive slope, just like I would expect. The acceleration graph would be a horizontal line, because it's constantly accelerating. So once you've gone through and learned how graphs and tracks works, you can go to the challenges. So here are a list of 15 challenges that you can work through, or you can create your own. Let's take a look at the first challenge. So the first challenge you'll see shows on the position graph a straight line, and what we want to do is try and arrange the track and the ball so that when we click on Roll Ball, the graph will match this dotted line. So this is what it's set up for. I'm just going to go ahead and roll it from here and see what happens. Well, like before, I get a curved line, but that doesn't match the graph. In fact, the graph is a straight line, and so I know that it's at a constant velocity. So I need to adjust my track. Maybe I'll just go to 3 on this, so that it's always horizontal. And it had some initial velocity in positive direction, so I'll give it 10. Um, it doesn't look like it started at, in the right position, so I'm going to go ahead and move it over to 50, because it looks like it's starting right between 0 and 100. And I'll roll the ball, and we'll see what happens. So now I can see that I'm getting a straight line, but it doesn't have the right slope. Our velocity that we're trying to reach is much greater. Now, if I look at this carefully, I can see that at about 10 seconds, the ball would be at about 350 meters, or centimeters in this case. And it started at about 50. So it looks like the displacement of the ball would be about 300 centimeters in about 10 seconds. And so our velocity is probably around 30 centimeters per second. I go ahead and set that, roll the ball, and try again. And now I see that I, in fact, get a graph that matches the graph that I had. And so I have accomplished that task. You can go back to the challenges and work through all 15 of them.